Good morning. Good morning. Today is the first Friday of Advent. It's St. Nicholas Feast Day. Advent is a season of waiting and preparing our hearts for Jesus. During this Advent season, we want to act as St. Nicholas to the generosity and caring for others. In today's readings, we will hear how those overloaded in the gospel, Jesus hears the blood who trusted in him. During during this Advent season, let's prepare our hearts for Jesus, live generously serving others, and, ha and have faith that God will provide us with all that we need as long as we do His will. Please stand for our gathering hymn, number 395, in your gather book, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Father. We come together this day to celebrate the feast day of St. Nicholas, a great saint of giving gifts and generosity. And so under his intercession, let us now call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your mercy, Lord. Protect us in all dangers through the prayers of the Bishop St. Nicholas, that the way of salvation may lie open before us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, But a very little while, and Lebanon shall be changed into an orchard, and the orchard be regarded as a forest. On that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of a gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the triumph will be no more, and the arrogant will have gone. All who are alert to do evil will, cut, will be cut off. Those whose mere words condemns a man who ensnares his defender at the gate, and leave the just man with an empty claim. Therefore, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of the house of Jacob, who redeemed Abraham, now Jacob shall have nothing to be ashamed of, nor shall his face grow pale. When his children see the work of my hands in the mist, they shall keep my name holy. They shall reverence the Holy One of Jacob and be in awe of God of Israel. Those who ear, err, and spirit shall acquire understandings, and those who find fault shall receive instructions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ways are faithfulness and love. 
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread word of him through all the land. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as I mentioned, we celebrate St. Nicholas today, as we do every December 6th, when we come together and celebrate this saint who is so closely associated with Christmas. St. Nicholas is how we say his name in English. In German, it would be Santa Claus or Santa Claus. And so, of course, we know who that is. And why is it that we associate Christmas? Why is Christmas Day the day in our tradition that it's so popular for us to receive presents and to give gifts and presents? And it's because of this story of St. Nicholas, of what it was that he did and what it teaches us about the true meaning of what Christmas is. A long, long time ago, about over 1,500 years ago in the world, in what we now call Turkey, in the country now called Turkey, at that time called Persia, St. Nicholas was a bishop in a town, and he was there to lead the church to make sure that everybody knew about Jesus and had the sacraments, just like our bishop, Archbishop Thompson. And St. Nicholas was known as someone who would do everything that he could to make sure that people who were in need, people who did not have their basic necessities, whatever it was, food or clothing or shelter, he would work to make sure that those needs were filled. He was known as a very generous man, as a man who was very, very serious about charity, about giving to others. There's a very famous story about a father with three daughters, all three of whom were nearing the time when they were to be married, and he could not, this father could not afford their dowry, what was something that was called that you had to pay, in other words, to pay for the wedding ceremony. I guess just like now, back then, weddings were very expensive. And the father could not afford to do this. And so as the story goes, St. Nicholas, because he didn't want this father to feel like he was indebted to him, he didn't want the father to know who had done this, St. Nicholas took enough gold for all three of this man's daughters and dropped it down the chimney so that when they woke up near Christmas, they would have enough for their weddings so that they could be married. And we've celebrated St. Nicholas as a saint ever since. And as I said, we associate him very closely with Christmas. He is perhaps the greatest saint of Christmas itself, other than perhaps Mary and Joseph, and then of course Jesus. And why is that? Because think about what Christmas is. Christmas is the day in which we celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. I'm sure you know it's coming up when all four of those candles are lit. It'll be very soon that we'll celebrate Christmas. And what do we do on birthdays? What's the great thing about birthdays is that birthdays are a time for gifts. A time to receive gifts. For your parents and your friends and loved ones, a time to give gifts. And why? Because every time we celebrate a birth, every time we celebrate someone's life, we are celebrating a gift of God. Because our own lives, our very lives, everything we have, as I've said many times, That was given to us as a gift. And Jesus is no different. Jesus came to the world so that we could love Him and know Him, so we could be forgiven of our sins, so that eventually one day we could even go to heaven and be with God and be with Him forever. Jesus came not because He had to, but because it was a gift. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. The key word there is gave. Jesus Christ on Christmas is a gift for all of us. It's better than any gift 
you could ever receive from Santa Claus better than any gift you could ever receive from your parents, whoever it might be, because it's the gift that gives us everything we have from God. It's the gift that gives us His love and His grace so that we can come together as a community and celebrate at Mass how much God loves us and how much we love Him. And so it's important for us to remember that the presents that we get on Christmas, the gifts that we receive, those are all well and good. Those are wonderful things. But they're wonderful because they remind us of the most important gift. They remind us of the most important thing that we receive on Christmas, which is the birth of Jesus, who came to save the world. And so just like St. Nicholas understood that the most important thing we can do to celebrate that is to give to others and share to others, so we too are called to understand and to do that. That our response to the greatest gift ever given us, Jesus, is to be generous and giving to others. And we thank him for the opportunity to do that. Let us now turn to our God with our needs and bring to him our prayers of petition. For Pope Francis, Father Tim, Father David, and Deacon Paul, may they be guided by the Holy Spirit and lead us in the way of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our government and world leaders, may they be guided by Jesus to become peacemakers in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all military men and wo women serving at home or overseeing, may God protect them and bring them home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our parish school and family to spread the good news of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray that during this Advent season, we wait patiently and ready ourselves for the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we too may follow St. Nicholas' example and share our will for those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose lives have been marked by faith, and at this Mass we pray in a special way for Patrick Hen. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these our prayers and to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Savior, Lord, there is none like you. 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray on the offerings set upon this sacred altar, on the feast day of blessed Nicholas, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by these sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of blessed St. Nicholas, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.